it's funny to me that, what, maybe a year, year and a half ago, you had all these fans that were schlobbing, absolutely schlobbing, all over the knob of SmackDown Live. Oh, this is so far superior to Raw, I can't believe anybody would waste their time with that three hours of crap. Look at SmackDown. Look at how awesome it is. The writing is incredible. The characters are great. Ah, what you got to say for yourselves now? SmackDown sucks. Like, worse than Raw. And that is saying something. And WWE... I realize when you see certain things on social media, you dismiss it as hardcore fan chatter, hardcore fan BS, the hardcore fan bubble, where you have a very vocal minority of your overall fan base who believes that they represent the majority of your fans and they really don't, so you're quick to dismiss these things. But hashtag fire road dog means something. Hashtag Fire Road Dog is not just some hardcore smarkiest to smark type of hashtag. And if we really want to be real and we want to get serious here for just a moment, if SmackDown continues to go down the path that it is right now, that is literally all that's going to be left watching your program is the hardest of the hardcore smarky wrestling WWE fans. And at what point in time, what the hell is the excuse going to be then? Well, just because they are literally the only fans we have left, that doesn't mean they know what the hell they're talking about. Because again, they're not in the wrestling business. They're not in the sports entertainment business. They haven't done this. They wouldn't know. Well, here's what I do know. Myself. Many of the other people like me that talk about this. Many of the people that write on the crappy chop shop dirt sheets. Many of you that are watching it that will like this video. Many of you that will not like me, do not like this video, and will crap on it in the comments section. I guarantee all of us have something in common. Give us a couple of hours. Hell, give us a good shit. And we will write and produce a better SmackDown show than Road Dog. It's another example of just because somebody's been in the business, just because somebody's been a star in the business, doesn't mean that translates into them knowing the first fucking thing about writing, booking, and producing a wrestling television program. You want any clearer evidence? See Road Dog. Like, like look at this whole thing. In a year, year and a half's worth of time, it went from SmackDown is the A show. Raw is shit. SmackDown is the star show. Raw is shit. SmackDown's gonna become the new A show. Raw will soon be the B show. Especially going up against Monday Night Football. And all that crap isn't true. And the reason is quite simple. It's Road Dog. Now you can sit there and say, Well, you've said in the past, like daddy, that ultimately it's Vince, and it's Vince's responsibility. And to a degree, you are correct. Ultimately, it is Vince McMahon who oversees everything. It is Vince McMahon who signs off on everything. But it is also ultimately Vince McMahon who puts somebody like Road Dog in this position that they are clearly incompetent at, clearly unqualified for, and clearly don't have the first clue of what the hell they're doing and couldn't write their way out of a goddamn paper bag. Not to mention, Vince being the overseer of everything, is not necessarily trying to write every single show. He is not truly trying to put together every single segment from scratch, from beginning to end, top to bottom. He relies upon a creative team, head writers, to put ideas together, construct an outline of a show, and then he might cherry pick and dive in and make suggestions and make changes and sometimes send it back and say, this shit sucks. Well, I think most of the SmackDown fans over the past few weeks in particular would agree they wish Vince would have wiped his ass with this and sent that shit back. No worry about the ramifications of what you would have gotten in its place, like when you send food back at a restaurant, because how could it be any worse? If the ideas presented are shit, then all Vince is going to do is try to make a crap sandwich out of shit. And you can clearly see it in the product for months now on SmackDown. Consistently, you're being presented absolute shit. So Vince... 
won't even bother at this point to make a crap sandwich. Because why? It won't change the fact that it's absolute S-H-I-T SHIT! Like, this is how bad Road Dog is. This is how bad he is. You do this stupid top 10 ranking that is completely all types of dumb fuck with absolutely no purpose and no reason for existing. Why in the hell did you even do this? You've got Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon on your show. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon and you find ways to involve them in the most idiotic, ridiculous fucking things that you could possibly imagine. You've got AJ Styles who even the old TNA haters will have a certain level of respect for him. Like AJ Styles as a babyface should be one of those universally cheered babyfaces. But yet you have taken AJ Styles and making him a boring as bricks champion. Like how the fuck do you accomplish that? How the hell could you even set out to try to make him as boring as you have managed to make AJ Styles? It's ridiculous. Shinsuke Nakamura. Newsflash, people. It's not New Japan anymore. That said, though, this is a guy that comes in with his own fan base following him. This is a guy who's wrestled in big venues over the years. This is a guy that's been in the business a long time. This is a guy that clearly has an appeal to a segment of your fan base. And yet, I can't name one fucking interesting thing Shinsuke Nakamura has done since he's come to the main roster. And blame that on the talent all you want. But ultimately, if the talent is given nothing to work with, then what the hell are they going to be able to do? Like you even put the Royal Rumble on Shinsuke and you still don't do shit with him. Why? Because Road Dog is fucking stupid. You've got the New Day and the Usos. Your two best tag teams of the company happen to both be on the same damn show. Then you've got guys like Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin, for Christ's sakes, this 40-plus athletic freaking freak, this great tag team wrestler paired with this guy that a lot of people like and Chad Gable. And you can't do shit right with this tag team division. You make this terrible. You get Bobby Roode. Somebody again with name recognition. Somebody again that the people would really like. And you find a way to make Bobby Roode boring as shit. And then to top it all off, to top it all off, to speak to the incompetence and sheer stupidity of Road Dog. The last two weeks, you haven't had Rusev on your damn show? Ding dong, dumb dick, in a company that more and more is concerned about reactions and merch sales, Rusev checks off both of those mother up and boxes in a big, big way. He is basically Smackdown Strowman for you. Raw uses Braun Strowman and tries to make him a big deal. Road Dog takes his Smackdown version of Strowman, who is massively over with the live event crowd, who moves a bunch of merch to the point where it can't even stay in stock. And he says, I've got an idea. We'll make the people really want them. We're not going to put them on two weeks of TV. Because we're fucking stupid. All this thing about SmackDown doesn't have the same level of talent as Raw. Does it matter? Hell no! You could put 30 massive superstars on there and Road Dog would still find a way to screw the hell up. Like seriously. It doesn't matter, you can bring everybody up from NXT. It don't matter, you can take everybody from Raw and bring them over. Shit's still gonna suck. He's found a way to make AJ Styles boring as bricks. Let's not even get onto the cami crap. Give me a fucking break. Shinsuke? Let me know when you do something interesting with him. The New Day and the Usos, you make them inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Bobby Roode, you made boring as bricks. And you decide the best way to feed Jerusalem is to not put him on television. It's some twisted ass reverse psychology bullshit. And then to top it all off, when you're paying customers, which by the way, if you look at SmackDown's live attendance in recent months, that tells you all you fucking need to know. The entire camera side, empty, upper deck where the camera's facing, tarped off. And that's not just this week. That's not just last week. That is consistent. And you can take all that B-show Tuesday night bullshit and shove it up your ass. The reason people aren't going to SmackDown is because they know it's a B-show because Road Dogg's booking this shit. 
You can't even fill up half a damn arena in secondary markets! You absolutely suck! And then Road Dog's response, when clearly, clearly, you would have to sit there and say, what in the bluest of blue fucks is going on for somebody to think that this is good? For somebody to think that SmackDown is A-OK? -okay? His response is to be the booking blocking bitch version of JBL on social media. Criticize him, call him out, he's going to block your ass. Now look, what astounds me about this is how wrestlers always want to talk about this and talk about that. Y'all bitches understand in WWE that you ultimately are part of a corporation, right? Just because you're wrestling doesn't mean that the rules apply that much differently compared to any other corporation out there. Believe me, I work for one. A lot of the people watching this work for one. And I promise you this much. One of the most important traits and characteristics that a leader and a successful leader at that has to have in a corporate environment is the ability to take and accept and utilize feedback. That is almost always primarily going to be negative. You'll hear corporations talk about the old opportunity sandwich. We'll tell them something good they're doing. We'll tell them something they're not doing so well. And then to put the bottom slice of bread on that son of a bitch, we're going to sit there and tell them how to make themselves better. In reality, they just sit there and say, hey, you're good here. Let's shit on you for 20 minutes. And then, hey, you go fucking figure it out. The point I'm getting at is, though, in a corporate environment, in any type of leadership position, and as the head writer of SmackDown, believe me, Road Dog is in a position of leadership. You must be willing to accept feedback. If you cannot handle feedback, if you cannot accept feedback, if you cannot take constructive and not so constructive criticism, then why the hell do you have the job? If me, as some knucklehead here on the internet, can sit there and take all the criticism, Valid, invalid, smart, and stupid, and I get all of it here in the comments and on Twitter and whatever. If I can take it and at least pay attention to it, at least look at it, and at least think about what is being said, and choose to accept it, and sometimes, maybe I don't do anything with it, sometimes I do. If I had the same attitude that these idiots in wrestling, specifically Road Dog did, I would never get any better and shut up you smart asses who said I never have. Fuck you. But here's what I do know. Somebody criticizes me, I'm not going to start whining and crying and blocking their ass like a bitch like Road Dog does. Like seriously, WWE, you have to look at it and you say, is this the type of dude that you want leading other people and putting people in positions to succeed or fail when he's so goddamn insecure that he can't take the least bit of criticism? This is ridiculous! And you wonder why people are going on social media and tweeting hashtag fire road dog. I'm not saying completely fire him from the company. This is a dude at one point in time that managed to get himself over and get himself over in a big way. I would like to see him as some type of behind the scenes guy, as an agent, working with certain talents, helping him with certain things. He can bring something to the table there. But clearly when we look at job fits, another big corporate thing, this ain't going so well. It is time for a change, WWE. And in terms of as the head writer of SmackDown, the time has come, officially, if you didn't think so before, to hashtag fire Road Dog. And you can dismiss what I'm saying and dismiss what everybody else is saying. Well, what's your excuse going to be when you have to fucking funnel all the fans that show up to SmackDown into one section of the entire damn arena? And if you don't think that time is coming... You are absolutely stuck with your head up your asses and in the goddamn sand. This is absolutely putrid. The roofs have shit alone. That's one of those things, that's a hill you die on. If Vince says, I don't want to book him, fuck you, Vince, I'm booking him anyways. And then when he gets the biggest reaction of the night and he moves as much merch as anybody, let me have you tell me how that's bad for business. These gutless, spineless cowards that are way in over their fucking heads that don't have the first idea of what the hell they're doing, lack any originality, lack any creativity, and ultimately are in over their heads. That's exactly what the hell Road Dog is. He's in over his head. WWE, do the right thing. Hashtag fire Road Dog before it's too late for SmackDown.